In the second part of the chapter, we shall learn about industries. When I say industries, broadly in India, industries can be divided into agro-based industries and mineral-based industries. Among the agro-based industries, we have the cotton textile industry, jute industry and sugar industry. When, it, when I say textile industry, textile industries occupy a unique position in the Indian economy. The reason is it contributes significantly to industrial production. Second one is employment generation and foreign exchange earnings, which is very much needed for the country. Now, if you look at the contribution made by textile industry, it contributes 2.3% to India's GDP, that is gross domestic product, which means the income coming from all the goods and services that are produced in the country. Then 7% of the country's manufacturing production and 13% of the country's export earnings. That is why it is playing a very important role. Then it is the only industry which is completely self-reliant. So it is self-reliant and complete in the value chain because we are able to produce right from raw material that is cotton to the final product completely within our country. Next, it provides living to one is farmers because cotton is cultivated all over India in majority of the states. Next to that is the cotton ball pluckers. They get jobs. Once the cotton balls are plucked, they go to the industry where the first process is ginning. Ginning means removing seeds from cotton. That seeds are also useful because oil is extracted, which is again edible or sometimes something, some food is made for the animals. Some fodder material is made for the animals out of it. Once ginning is done, then it goes for spinning. Spinning means making yarn out of it. Then weaving. Weaving is making cloths out of it. Then dyeing. Dyeing is coloring. Then designing, packaging, tailoring. Sewing, so many people are engaged in different activities. Apart from that, there are ancillary industries. That, that is industries that support like chemicals and dyes, packaging material and even engineering work. And that is why textile industry occupies a unique position in Indian economy. Now moving ahead in India, the states that have flourished in textile industry are Maharashtra and Gujarat. Now the reasons behind that is, first of all, availability of raw cotton. Say mainly in Maharashtra, it is Mumbai. Or if it is uh, Gujarat, it is Ahmedabad. So very easily, these places could get the raw material from Maharashtra or Gujarat because they produced cotton on a large scale. Next to that is transport facilities. They are well connected to their hinterland, means areas from where, where they can get the raw material. Market. Market here means demand. There is a good demand all over the world for the cloth or even the yarn that is produced in our country. So we can say the product have a great demand in the national and international market. Then it is labor. In our country, we easily get cheap labor force and they are supported by migrant labors. There are labors coming from North India, especially Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Odisha. They come to work. So we easily get cheap labor. Then moist climate. Moist climate is one more factor. Actually, the southern part of India, if I take below Tropic of Cancer, has tropical climate. And apart from that, since it is close to the sea or it is surrounded by sea, there is moisture. So cotton grows well in warm and moist climate where summer is long and where there is salinity in the soil. So these factors add up and that is the reason Maharashtra and Gujarat developed in textile industry. But actually seeing if you see the states, it is Maharashtra, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. 
in maharashtra it is mumbai but of course the industries from mumbai have shifted out because mumbai is changing into a tertiary sector completely then it is gujarat and in gujarat it is ahmedabad if it is tamil nadu it is coimbatore but today these industries are found in all cities all important places within our country now what are the drawbacks what are the minus points when it comes to this industry we have made good progress when it comes to production of cotton and in india we mainly produce long staple cotton now what do we understand by long staple cotton based on the length of the fiber it is called short staple medium staple and long staple and obviously the long staple is the best one and if you see proportionally the long staple cotton production is more than the short or the medium staple cotton so we have achieved progress in this area but the other things are that the power supply in our country is erratic so that is a problem faced by most of the major part of the country then machinery need to be upgraded because there are many areas where the machines that are used are old and outdated say the industry was established 30 years ago so the machine is also 30 years old then low output of labor then stiff competition with synthetic fiber synthetic fiber means the one that comes from petrochemical industries like it is nylon or polyester so there is competition with them these are all some drawbacks after all these drawbacks the important one is now we have already seen that our country produces cotton on a large scale actually we rank number 1 in the world when it comes to production but all that cotton that is produced is utilized in making yarn so our spinning mills are competitive at the global level and capable of using all the fiber that we produce the weaving means making cloths knitting and processing units cannot use most of this yarn now we are producing yarn on a large scale but we are not able to use the yarn why is it so the reason is most of this yarn good quality yarn is exported so it is not available to indian industries so what they get is a poor quality because the good ones are all picked up by the developed nations there are some large and modern factories of course in this segment but most of the production is in the fragmented small units which cater to local markets so mostly if you see the production is in the form of small units small scale industries where they will have 5 10 15 machines power looms and with the help of that there is production and this mismatch is a major drawback for the industry our next industry is jute textiles talking about jute textiles india is the largest producer of raw jute and jute goods India stands second at a place as exporter after Bangladesh. So when it comes to export, Bangladesh ranks first. Most of the mills in India are located in West Bengal. The reason is India seventy percent of the production comes from West Bengal and rest of it from the neighboring states. Now in West Bengal, they are mainly located along the bank of the river Hooghly, and that is a narrow belt and that is very useful for the production of jute. so the question that is asked is what are the factors that are responsible for the location of these textile industries in hugli basin when i say river basin river basin is the area covered by the main river and tributaries here i am talking about hugli and its tributaries that area nearby areas so why is it so the reason is proximity of the jute producing areas and when i say proximity proximity means close by jute is produced around hugli river next to that is inexpensive water transport water transport is the cheapest mode of transport because the fuel required by the ships or boats is less and waterway is naturally available hardly any maintenance is required that's why it is the cheapest mode of transport good network of railways road waterways all these are there to facilitate the movement of raw material to the mills then there is abundant water available for processing of raw jute because jute first of all it takes around 8 months to grow it is tall thin stem like so they cut it and they have to soak it in the water so that the outer layer gets decomposed then that raw jute is to be cleaned in water and then they have to dry it so for all this processing work they require a lot of water 
and that is available in West Bengal. Cheap labor from West Bengal and even adjoining states. Adjoining states means it can be Uttar Pradesh, it can be Bihar, it can be Jharkhand. They easily get cheap labor. So, these are the factors that are responsible for their location in Hooghly Basin. Moving ahead. So, what are the challenges faced by this industry? So, first of all, competition from other jute growing countries like Bangladesh, Brazil, Philippines, Egypt, Thailand. The second one is stiff competition in the international market from synthetic substitutes. So they can use plastic or something else and they are making, uh, instead of making jute bags, they will make bags out of synthetic material and that is cheaper. So in this way, there is a tough competition. So these are the challenges faced by the industry. But the good thing is demand is on increase because there is a growing global concern for environment friendly biodegradable material. So that has increased. That's a good thing. Next government policies which have made it mandatory that is compulsory to use jute package. The main markets for us is USA, Canada, Ghana, Saudi Arabia, UK and Australia. So that is about jute industry. Talking about sugar industry. Now sugar industry India ranks second in the world because the country which is first is Brazil. Whatever sugarcane is produced in the world, 50% comes from Brazil and around 25% from India. But when it is production of gar ya khandasari, so it is jaggery actually. So then in that we rank first. So in India actually gar and khandasari production is more than the sugar. Now about this industry, this industry is a raw material oriented industry. Now, what do we understand by this? This means that wherever, whichever regions produce sugar cane, near those areas only, we will find sugar industry. So, sugar industry are established near the sugar cane producing areas. That is why they are called raw material oriented industry. Now, the raw material that is used in this industry is first of all heavy and bulky. Bulky means it takes a lot of space. Next to that is the cost of the transportation of raw material is more than the cost of the transportation of finished goods. Because from the sugarcane producing areas, if I am carrying 10 trucks of sugarcane to the sugar mill, finally I will get only one truck of sugar. So the cost of the transportation of raw material is more than the cost of the transportation of finished products. And this is a weight losing industry. Now, one more thing about this industry is once the sugarcane is cut, within 24 hours, the sugarcane should be taken to the mills and juice must be extracted and it should be converted to sugar. The reason is gradually within the sugarcane, the sucrose content is lost. Actually, the bonds of sucrose break. So, it is losing its sweetness. Then what will happen is the amount of sugar we will get from sugarcane will reduce. That is why as early as possible, as soon as it is cut, as early as possible, it should be taken to sugar mills and converted into sugar. Now, this industry is one more drawback is that it is seasonal in nature. And that is why it is ideally suited for cooperative industry. So, when I say this industry is seasonal, this means that in the rainy season, this industry is completely closed. So, around 4-5 or five months, the industry is closed. So, the people who are working there cannot be utilized throughout the year. And that is why this industry works well in the cooperative sector. Because in cooperative sector, there is a kind of partnership between the sugarcane uh, growing farmers and the sugar mills. So the temporary labor that is needed is provided by the sugarcane producing farmers. And the profits are shared. That's why this industry is in cooperative sector. And in cooperative sector, Maharashtra is doing the best. 60% of the mills in India are in Uttar Pradesh. Another one is Bihar. The mills are located in other places like Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana also. Even if you go up, it is uh, Punjab, Haryana, like that. Now, in the exams, one question is asked. That is, in recent years, there is a tendency for the sugar mills to shift and concentrate in the south. Why is it so? And the western states. Simple, when you come towards south, south is tropical region. Unlike the temperate areas of Uttar Pradesh, 
where winter is very severe, which is not good for the crop. But in south, it is not so. So they, have, they get a longer duration for growing as it is sugarcane takes one year to grow completely. And in south, it can grow without any disturbance. So here the points are, first, this is because the cane produced here has higher sucrose content. The highest sucrose content from sugar cane in India we get from Tamil Nadu. So the best sugar cane in India is grown in Tamil Nadu. The sucrose content is almost double. When I take the south, in the south, the cooler climate also ensures a longer crushing season. Unlike the north, South India does not have very cool climate. Winter is very mild and this ensures a longer crushing season. Moreover, the cooperatives are more successful in Maharashtra and nearby states. And that is why the industries are, there is a tendency among the industries to shift south. But still, even now, Uttar Pradesh ranks first in sugar production. The reason is in the last few years, Deccan regions of India, southern part, have experienced drought conditions. What are the major challenges of this industry? One is seasonal nature of industry. I told you that rainy season, we cannot cut sugar cane, so the mills are closed. Old and inefficient method of production, because most of the industries in India, supposing they are established 30 years ago, the machines are also 30 years old. Moreover, the cooperatives are more successful in certain states, like Maharashtra. Transport delay in reaching cane to the factories. So if there is a delay, there will be reduction in the sugar that is derived out of it. Next to that is we need to maximize the use of bagasse. But what is done is they dump it out like waste. In the open dumping, it smells very badly. But this can be used for making paper or it can be used as a fuel. After this, we talk about iron and steel industry. 